girl. Today, her family shared some news that could lead to more serious charges against everyone allegedly involved in the crime. And putting the brakes on a mega grocery merger, why Kroger and Albertson say stopping the deal is actually worse for customers. Hey there, Kim. Hey, Karen. Well, it's a nice start to the work week, but believe it or not, here we are in February expecting severe weather. We'll talk about when the storms will arrive. There are two rounds, and we'll have that for you coming up. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, we've got a heartbreaking development about that 11-year-old who was shot while on her couch sleeping. Well, hours ago, we just learned a fourth person has now been charged. Lamara Glenn was shot while sleeping inside a home on Detroit's east side when she was shot. She'd been hospitalized ever since, but we told you her family was thinking about removing her from life support last week. That home was shot up during that drive-by shooting that happened nearly two weeks ago. Well, today, prosecutors revealed charges against 19-year-old Herschel Marion Jr. of Detroit. There's his mugshot there. He is the fourth person charged in the case, accused of assault with intent to murder, along with several other counts. Now, he was given a $2 million cash bond. Three other young men were arraigned on Friday. Now, charges could, though, be upgraded since the girl has died. We're working the story. We'll have more on the case when you join us at 5. Well, he was known to impersonate Elvis. Now the Dearborn Heights man faces charges because of what police say happened in a hotel room with a child. Published reports say 45-year-old Matthew James Chantelos has traveled the world imitating the king of rock and roll. Well, now court documents show he's facing three charges, including sexual exploitation of a minor. Pennsylvania newspaper says he was found in a hotel over in that state with a 16-year-old naked girl who had run away from New York. She reportedly says he gave her vodka and exchanged nude photos. That report also says he was arrested Friday and will soon be transferred to Pennsylvania for arraignment. Right now, Detroit police are trying to find the man who stole a car with a three-year-old girl in the back seat. Now, luckily, she's been found, but he is still on the loose. I want you to take a close look at these pictures on your screen. Police are looking for this guy. Now, at the time, he was dressed in gray. If he looks familiar to you, call police or Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Now, this was a scary case that set off an Amber Alert at 2.22 in the morning on Sunday. Surveillance video showing the suspect getting into the car at a gas station near Greenfield and Schoolcraft on the city's west side. The girl was found wandering in the street about three hours later. Now, the car was found at Joy Road in Evergreen. So, again, if you saw anything, police need your help on this one. Give them a call. Michigan's presidential primary election is tomorrow, but more than one million voters have already cast their ballots. Today, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson offered an update on the state's very first in-person early voting. She says 78,000 people used the new method. The nine-day period ended yesterday, and that was also the busiest day, with 11,000 voting Sunday alone. So if you're voting tomorrow, polls are open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also, you can still bring your absentee ballot to your clerk's office or a secure drop box before polls close. You can also still register to vote with proof of residency and vote all in one trip. Benson says the number of early voters is significant. So it's 13 percent more election day votes in 2024 than in 2020. And it really is a reflection of voter enthusiasm and also of Michigan's expanded voting options. The only active Democrats in the primary are President Joe Biden and Dean Phillips, a congressman from Minnesota. One interesting note, though, some Arab groups have urged people to vote uncommitted to show their displeasure over Biden's handling of the war in Gaza. And that will be something to watch for after the polls close. On the Republican side, the leading candidates are former President Donald Trump and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Tomorrow night, watch our special streaming election coverage. Devin Skillian, Kimberly Gill and Kristen McDonald will be breaking breaking down early results for you and also taking a close look at some of those top issues. Expect more election coverage tomorrow at 10 p.m. on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. We are getting another blast of spring right now. This is a live look. Look at that Detroit riverfront. Mm -hmm. Oh, blue skies. The sun was out. 
So let's bring in Kim. <laughs> <laughs> is that horrible to say, Kim? I know you've got a crazy week ahead. Setup. That was not a good toss, was it? I apologize. I just know it. Here I, comes Kim. Here let's comes find a Kim. Spot. Okay, I'll, I'll, let's try that. No, I, I mean, I guess I have a little good news. We could break a record tomorrow. We'll be in the 60s, but it's a trade off. We do have the chance for some fairly strong thunderstorms. 55 right now in Detroit. Howl's in the mid 50s, 52 in Pontiac, mid 50s in Monroe. A couple cool spots out there. One of them is Monroe in the upper 40s, 49 in Mount Clemens, otherwise low to mid 50s, well above our normal high, which is now 38. Tomorrow we get into the 60s, but we have two rounds of storms. The first will come overnight into the very early morning hours of uh, just kind of the tail end of the rush hour. We get to 63 and then another round comes into play overnight tomorrow night and into third Wednesday morning. So it's just a lot of we've got snow, record breaking temperatures and severe weather all within a 48 hour period. So we're going to break it down for you here coming up. All right. Thank you, Kim. Former President Donald Trump has officially appealed that four hundred and fifty four million dollar fraud judgment against him in New York. Now, among other things, Trump's attorneys are asking a mid level appeals court to decide if the judge committed errors of law and or fact. The judge decided Trump and his sons schemed for years to deceive banks and insurers by lying about his wealth. Trump's attorneys have argued the law was applied incorrectly and there were no victims in the case. The original judgment was three hundred and fifty five million but jumped with interest. The total will increase by nearly one hundred and twelve thousand dollars a day until Trump pays or the judgment is overturned. Not enough competition and higher prices. Those are the two big concerns for the Federal Trade Commission as it files suit to stop this big merger. The grocery stores Kroger and Albertsons reached a $25 billion deal to get together, and that was back in 2022. Well, now the FTC is alleging that that merger would not be good for customers and then could lead to store closures, maybe some job losses. The stores say it's the lawsuit that will actually hurt consumers and then help larger non-union retailers like Walmart, Amazon and Costco. OK, let's talk about our Go For It CPR Lifesavers event. It has been a really busy day at the Northwest Activity Center in Detroit. We've already trained more than 1,000 people on the hands-free CPR that can save lives. I was out there this afternoon. It was about 1 o'clock, and boy, it was crowded. Kimberly Gill has been there all day long tracking the event to make all of our communities a little safer. How are things out there this afternoon, Kim? Karen, it has really just warmed my heart how this community has come out for this Lifesavers event. It's just, it's been amazing. It was busy when you were here. The crowd is still steady. Um, and it's a skill that anybody can learn. There's still time for you to come on out. Um, some of the statistics are really startling. At least when I first started working on the story, I didn't realize that you're more likely to have to perform CPR on somebody that you love versus somebody that you don't know, a stranger. Case in point, we have Jennifer and Tim here. They're from Commerce Township and nine years ago you guys were sleeping and you heard Tim choking. Pick up the story from there. So um, I tried to wake him up and I knew something was wrong and called 911, uh, opened the door, ran downstairs to open the door so they could get in. Smart. And then uh, by the time I got up he had lost his heartbeat so I had to pull him out of bed and start doing CPR. And you, so you called 911. You had 911 on this on speakerphone. You had to pull him out of the bed because you had like a high bed, very high bed. So I had to pull him down and maybe bump his head along the way um, but to get him down onto a flat surface so I could start CPR. And, and what was going through your mind? I, I cannot imagine being able to keep my composure. But in full disclosure, we should point out that you're a nurse at Henry Ford, and so you you kind of you had had this training, but uh, it, it had been a while. Yes. Um, I had lapsed in my CPR training and I had never done CPR as a nurse, which was a good thing. Um, but all I could think was that I love you. And that's all I could say was I love you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So it's so important to come out today because of that. This, is, this, this meant a lot for you to come here from Commerce. It meant a lot. It means a lot to both of us, obviously, um, for different reasons. Um, the chances are that wives are going to have to do this above husbands mm -hmm. and so it's even more important for women to feel empowered and feel like they can do it and have the strength to do it because the reality is 
men are going to have those heart attacks first. Yeah. Tim, really quickly, I know you don't remember anything that happened, but what do you, what do, what do you feel about CPR, just the importance of it? I've been, I learned it 50 years ago, so yeah, sticks with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for talking with Thank us. You. And uh, yeah, Karen, so there's still time to come on down here. We'll be here till seven. I love to meet everybody that comes in and all of your local four personalities are here too. A lot of us are. I know you guys are back on the air there, so you had to go back. But uh, it's just been a really, really, again, touching event to see so many people come out to learn this life-saving skill. You know, Kim, I was impressed, obviously, with two things. Obviously, the numbers. So tell us in terms of how many people are showing up. And also just the yeah. crowd. I mean, I was so impressed with, I mean, there were some people that, you know, might have been a little physically challenged, but they knew that this was an important skill to learn. They showed up, they learned it, and they walked away feeling so confident. So confident, and, and that's, that's just the thing that warms my heart. I think you said we, we were over a thousand people, Karen. We had just, when we were planning this event, we said if we get a thousand, that would be great. And we topped that an hour ago, and we still have several hours to go. So uh, it, it just feels really great to be a part of this, to be, a, to be doing something that you know is helping the community. And uh, again, we'll be here till seven. I think the whole process maybe took an hour, hour and 15 minutes uh, from start to finish, from registration to coming in and working and doing quality CPR with uh, these dummies here. And it, it just, it's, it's amazing. So uh, hope to see you come on out. We're at the Northwest Activity Center in Detroit. Karen, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Kim. And one quick last thing too. Didn't you feel the same? Like when you were in that room, didn't you feel like, oh my goodness, we are literally saving lives? Like I thought we walked out of there oh, and like we made because, a difference. Well, yeah, I mean, all the stories, you hear people coming from all over. I mean, this couple came from Commerce. I had another lady say that she came from Chesterfield. And, you know, these are people, um, you know, some of them, as you said, they, they come in and, and they're uh, on walkers. You yeah. know, they, they maybe can't get around as good, but they see the importance and they signed up for this and came. And it just, it, it really just warms my heart. Yeah. And you're right. They left out of here feeling confident that, yes, they can go and save a life. Life-changing day for sure. We will check back with you at 5 and 6. Thank you so much, Kim. We appreciate it. Here's another reminder. The Go For It CPR Lifesavers event continuing for nearly three more hours. All you need to do is head on over to the Northwest Activity Center on Myers in Detroit. You can see the address on your screen. Walk-ins welcome. Lessons continue through 7.